All right, this is section one, two. We're talking about our properties of real numbers. There are eight of them. Okay, this first page, we're just going to go over the identity and the inverse properties for both multiplication and addition. All right, next page, we'll go over some of the other properties. You're probably familiar with all of these. You've seen them before. They're going to be very simple. They're going to seem very simple, but they are very important for what we do in algebra, which is solve problems, solve equations. Okay, so let's start with the additive identity. All right, so if you think about this word identity, identity means like that's who you are. So when we do the additive identity, we we'll want to be able to add something to a number so that it keeps its identity or it stays the same. Okay, so normally I'd ask, you know, what is this number? Y'all can probably figure that out. Is zero. All right, and zero is the additive identity that number. Because I can add that number to any number, and it will always keep its identity. So let's write a rule over here that will work for any number. So any number a plus 0 equals a, All right? where 0 is our additive identity. All right, so multiplication, we want to do the exact same thing. We want to be able to take some number. So we'll again start with 3, but this time we want to multiply it by something where it keeps its identity. So 3 times something equals 3. Okay, again, you can probably figure this part out, it's 1. And since 1 works with every other number, 7 times 1 equals 7, then 1 must be our multiplicative identity. So let's write our rule out here. A times 1 equals A. All right, so the inverse is something where we want to add or multiply, depending on which one we're doing, to a number so that it becomes the identity. So the identity is what we just identified. 0 for addition, 1 for multiplication. So now over here what I want to be able to do is add something to 3 so it equals the identity that we just identified over here so that equals 0 so what can I add to 3 so that it equals 0 okay well that's negative 3 alright so let's try it again with some other number let's say 7 plus something and we want it to equal the identity so 0 what can I add to 7 okay well negative 7 all right, so it looks like we have a pattern emerging here. So let's turn that into a rule. Any number a plus the negative of that number will equal the identity. So the opposite sign is your additive inverse. All right, so if I had negative 8, we would add positive 8, because that's the opposite sign. That's negative negative 8, which is positive 8. All right, multiplicative inverse. So this is the hardest one. So we have 3. We want to multiply by something to equal the multiplicative identity, which is 1. So what can I multiply by 3 to get 1? All right, in common answers, some people say 0. Okay, but 3 times 0 is 0. That's not going to work. All right, um, some people say negative 3. But 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. So that's not what we're looking for there. That doesn't work. All right, so what I usually end up suggesting, if we can't figure it out, is let's say, let's turn this into an x. Okay, you're familiar with Algebra 1, simple equations. 3 times x equals 1. And how would you solve this for x? Okay, and almost everybody in the room should be able to tell me that you're going to divide both sides by 3 because the 3's here will cancel, and there you go. You're left with x equals 1 third. 1 third. Okay, because 3 times 1 third, you'll remember this from Algebra 1 as well, that when you multiply something by its denominator, the 3's cancel, leaving you with the numerator. Okay, so let's try another example over here. 7 times what equals 1? 
All right, if you follow the kind of pattern we developed up here, then you should get one seventh. Sevens will cancel, leaving us with one. All right, so this right here has a word. Anytime you take a number and you flip it over, and while it doesn't seem like that, this is actually, in fact, seven over one. This is three over one. Any whole number is always assumed to be over one. Flip it over, one third, one seventh. Okay, you've probably heard this before. Hopefully you have. Is the reciprocal. So the added, the multiplicative inverse is multiplying a number by its reciprocal to get the identity of one. Okay, so let's write that down as a rule over here. A times its reciprocal one over A equals one, the multiplicative identity. So reciprocal for multiplicative inverse, the opposite, opposite sign for additive inverse. A one is the multiplicative identity and zero is the additive identity. All right, those are our first four properties, so let's move on over here. All right, now the other four addition and multiplication properties, um, they kind of have their own deal. Um, we'll do one example of addition and multiplication for each one. All right, so closure property um, basically says that if two and five are real, then two plus five is real. All right, we know two plus five equals seven, and that seven is a real number, so that holds true. All right, and closure property says that that's true for any addition. Okay, so any two numbers that we add together, if they're both real, then our result will also be a real number. All right, and this works as well for multiplication. So if three and nine are real, then comma three times nine is real. Okay, and just like addition, we know 3 times 9 is 27. Okay, 27 is definitely a real number, as are 3 and 9. Alright, so that's all the closure property is. We don't really use that one all that much, but it is important um, in the scope of math. Alright, so let's move down to the commutative property. Now, these are the ones that you are probably familiar with. Alright, so the commutative property says that if we have 3 plus 2, that that is the same thing as 2 plus 3. 3 plus 2 is 5, 2 plus 3 is 5. Okay, seems very simple, okay, but it's actually an important thing. Alright, it works the same way with multiplication. If I have 3 times 2, that's going to equal 2 times 3. Alright, so the general form, so that it works for any number, is a plus b equals b plus a and then down here a times b equals b times a so anytime you're writing out math two letters written right next to each other with nothing in between is assumed to be multiplication you don't have to put a x please don't put an x because that looks like it's three letters written next to each other um, if you do feel the need to put something there you can put a dot in between Okay, but that's not even necessary with these. Alright, just write the num letters next to each other and you're good to go. Alright, the associative property. And this time we need three numbers, so we're going to say 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 2 plus 3 plus 4. Alright, so when we associate things together, okay, we, we kind of group them. Alright, so if I have three things, I'm going to group two of these. I'm going to associate the two and the three. And the associative property says that no matter what I associate together, they're always going to equal the same thing. So two plus three plus four equals two plus three plus four. So you can kind of think of it as just moving the parentheses around. 
All right now with numbers you do need to put a little dot in between because it'll look like 234 if you don't. All right, again, don't use X's. Those look like variables if you put those in there. So this works the exact same way. Multiplication 2 times 3 times 4 equals 2 times 3 times 4. So let's go write our general form over here. A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C. And A, B, C equals A, B, C. All right, and the last one is the distributive property. This kind of combines multiplication and addition in the same problem. All right, so let's say we have A times, actually, let's go back a second. Okay, let's say we have 2 times 3 plus 4. We're going to say that that is the same thing as 2 times 3 plus 2 times 4. Alright, you're probably familiar from your Algebra 1 class of doing something like this, showing that it distributes, it multiplies by each one. That's all we're doing here. Okay, you can verify this. If you solve this out normally, you do with your uh, order of operations, PEMDAS. Okay, you would add these together. 3 plus 4 is 7. Multiply by 2 is 14. Over here, you would multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. And then you would add 6 plus 8, and you get 14. Let me see that that does, in fact, check out that those are the same. So we can write our rule over here to the side. A times B plus C equals AB plus AC. And there are your eight properties for addition and multiplication.